We actually have quite a bit of Tesla stock news today on this sunny Saturday afternoon. First up, Elon Musk says on X that there will be several point releases in quick succession following the latest software to FSD 12.5.1 that is now rolling out to customers. So it does look like potentially Tesla has made some breakthroughs with FSD and they want to roll these new updates out as fast as possible. And for Tesla stock that is now very much dependent on the Rubble Taxi network, at least on October 10th, getting definitive guidance for the first Rubble Taxi rides, this is a lockstep improvement towards that. It's also likely a lockstep improvement towards getting fsd in other countries not just the us but canada europe and ultimately china which you can even just forget about the robo taxi network in and of itself for just a moment think about how big the opportunity would be if we actually get just fsd in canada europe and china that's a big opportunity in and of itself for subscription revenue and or just one-time lump sum payments for purchasing fsd outright if you recall elon musk said on the earnings call with this latest version fsd v12.5 they can actually start to go to regulators in different countries and try to get fsd into those countries now europe's probably going to be the hardest market to get fsd actually in because there's a lot of requirements china looks like we're already on the way to getting fsd in that country and china fsd could be massive and i do think overall this is even one of those sleeper catalysts that not a lot of people are anticipating but it could be some big news when it does get released obviously into those other countries if i recall correctly back on april 29th there were reports that fsd would be released in china soon and tesla stock rallied over 15 percent that day just to kind of give you a little bit of historical precedent wes the cybertruck lead engineer posted this from it looks like a facebook page of cybertruck owners only and this individual, Rodney Nelson, says, My previous truck was a diesel Ford F-250. I am also very experienced in operating rig equipment. Today, I use the Cybertruck to bumper tow my 10 thousand um, pound trash trailer for a dump run i understand that the cyber truck is considered a pickup truck and not a heavy duty towing truck however my experience with the cyber truck was the best bumper towing experience i've ever had number one the camera accurately aligns the ball with the hitch the visual angle was perfect number two once the trailer mount is lined up the truck remains stationary without rolling without rolling forward even a millimeter the electric motor stops and holds position impressive and the torque generated by the the electric motor is remarkable and this is something that a, that a lot of truck owners that i've talked to even personally like to say is hey what about hauling stuff what about hauling boats or like this individual is due just hauling garbage to go dump somewhere is the range really bad and from, I mean, what you could see there, probably not. Although there's been some testing on this, each towing load does vary. And it's it's safe to say, I, I believe at this stage, the Cybertruck holds up well compared to other trucks in this regard. It is being announced that Tesla is back to shipping Model Ys from China to Canada. And this is an official rendering from Tesla of what their new semi factory in Nevada will look like when complete. Production is currently expected to start in 2025. Construction has already started, and the factory will be capable of producing 50,000 semis per year. And this is what the factory is going to look like, which I find very interesting because on the last earnings call that we just had a couple of days ago, Elon Musk said, yeah, we don't want to push into Mexico until we know what policy looks like. until we have a better understanding of what demand looks like and the economy overall. But yet Tesla is pushing full steam ahead on this factory for the semi truck, semi truck. Yeah, there's probably a lot of demand for semis that Tesla wants to start being able to meet. And as Sawyer Merritt says, community notes is such a great feature. And I mean, you gotta, you gotta love the FUD 
I mean, just just blatantly lying, right? It's not even FUD because FUD can be correct sometimes. This is just a blatant lie. It's from Jalapnik. I don't know. I don't think I said that right. They say half of Tesla's Q2 profit came from your taxes. <laughs> Community Notes clarifies this and says regulatory credit revenues comes from other automakers who pollute beyond the legal limit, not from tax dollars even elon musk laughing at crying face um reacted to this post because it's just blatantly false like how are news outlets even around anymore that lied just blatantly like that now this is some pretty big news as well and i do think is bullish for tesla waymo today announced they have completed two million paid rider only robo taxi trips now why is this good news for tesla as well considering this is waymo well the more rides the more people get accustomed to kind of seeing um, these self-driving vehicles the easier it's going to be for tesla's adoption when they do have the mass rollout of the robo taxi network people are going to be kind of used to this already so that's great but it also makes it easier for regulatory approval in different cities to say hey waymo's been doing this for a long time we have better um accident free data than let's say waymo it's gonna be easier for tesla to get approved and the robo taxi network overall is is going to be so large not just from tesla but from waymo and anyone else that is successful in deploying self-driving vehicles the market is just large enough to support everyone so waymo is doesn't even really have a market at this point tesla will be number one there will be waymo though there will be others but it's it's kind of like electric vehicles right tesla being the first to commercialize electric vehicles does not mean they're going to be the only one that is successful long term in this per perhaps it's rivian perhaps ford and gm have their own successes in electric vehicles but without tesla doing it first there would be no electric vehicles from these other automakers I guess perhaps that's probably the best way to think about it. Senior director of Tesla's 4680 team, Bond Eagleson on X, confirmed this is the first ever dry cathode 4680 Cybertruck. And we are seeing video outside of Giga Nevada of what looks like 12 Tesla semi trucks that look to be completed. Tesla has released their summer release features list and MCU one customers are finally getting FSD supervised. Here's the list of the new updates FSD supervised for MCU one vehicles. Um, revamped climate controls for Model 3 and Model Y, Amazon and YouTube Music, that's pretty cool, Castle, Domad, Classic and other game updates, parental controls, navigation improvements, weather forecast and air quality, one-time scheduled preconditioning and charging, brightness slider for ambient lighting, reduced fan speed during phone calls, Zoom updates, and Tesla mic support in the U.S. Now, I do want to talk about what's next for Tesla stock, and I just want to be blatantly honest with you guys. We are entering a period of extreme volatility for markets really over the next couple of months, at least until the election. Now, the problem is even just putting a time frame like this up until the election on this period of volatility is the economy is probably going to continue to weaken during this period in time okay gdp came in at 2.8 percent if you exclude your one-time instant instances of, of of boosting gdp if you exclude the massive government spending if you exclude inventories alone gdp only came in at 0.6 percent it's almost it's almost like the numbers are being botched now eventually that will start to catch up and eventually the economy will look even worse just look at durable goods orders they came in at negative 6.6 percent month over month that was the biggest drop we have seen in many years it's just boop, falling off a cliff so i mean after the election you could see the economy being worse off and a potential growth scare coming by the end of this year and, and people might be a little bit fearful heading into 2025 of maybe we get a recession now this tends to happen quite often in recent years where people kind of get scared and fearful about what the next year has in store we've seen this for 2022 heading into 2023 people are like yep we're going into a recession right people get fearful 
sell off stocks you get that end of the year kind of uh correction anyways regardless of an election or not this this tends to just be a trend people kind of start to look ahead to next year and if people start to foresee a recession then uh that does lead to even more volatility in november and december think about even 2018 you had one of the worst decembers we've ever had I don't want to say we're going to have a really bad November and December, but it is possible if the economy continues to weaken. So I think not just the next you know, couple of months, but maybe the next six, nine, 12 months could be very volatile. And what I mean by this is expect big updates, big down days, big rallies, big falls, um, many corrections possibly during this time. But when you do get that final growth scare, that recession scare or potentially recession actually materializes that's when you're going to see the large drop that's when you're going to see the 20 30 40 50 percent drop and i think wall street again like i said in the last video is kind of delusional expecting a soft landing now this would obviously be negative for tesla when that happens but i do think over the next couple of months tesla will be able to rally i think the robo taxi event will be um a great um time for tesla i think when we get the new models released to to us when we know what they look like we know what the specs are what the pricing is going to be what the expected ramps are going to be for these new models i think that'll push tesla stock higher so imagine it like this if tesla's a 400 dollars company by the end of this year and we go into a growth scare recession scare perhaps we only fall to 300 dollars or back to 250 um you know that's that's kind of where i'm looking at this instead of tesla going from 220 today down to 100 or 150. I, I think you're going to see a rally between now and that ultimate growth scare in this period of extreme volatility. And uh, I think we're definitely heading into a period of extreme volatility. But as I said in the prior video, I do think a lot of the selling is already done, if we want to be honest, for this period in time. Now, I'm not expecting just a you know V-shaped recovery back to new all-time highs. I don't think we're going to hit new all-time highs. I think 565 for the for the SPY was likely the high of um at least until November, December, at least until after the election, if a growth scare does not come by that time. But I do think it's going to be very volatile. I think we're going to chop around between 550 and 530 on the low end um, until we do get probably to September. And then you can see a larger election correction um, kind of pullback. But again, I mean, if you're thinking of correction top to bottom uh, is like 10 percent. I mean, that would put you back to about 508 from here considering we stay at these if we stay at these levels to 508 that would be a pullback of about six and a half percent um from now until september and i think that is um a pretty good base case assumption but really in other words as i warned about in the last video i don't think you want to be um too overexposed to puts here i don't think you want to be too overexposed to calls here i really think this is an in and out trading kind of environment if you're not a trader then you can look for selective um deals out there i think tesla presents a better opportunity obviously now to get in than uh in the 270s right and i think the bullish logic is unchanged if anything it actually got better after tesla's last earnings but yet the stock sold off that's actually why we have more price target increases for tesla following tesla's last earnings than price target reductions like firms are actually raising their price targets on tesla following tesla's last earnings so it's not just me saying um earnings were good that that reinforced the bull thesis you're actually seeing this from wall street and as i said in the video that came out at 4 p.m yesterday hedge funds and institutions are actually buying the dip in tesla they're doing this via options they're obviously buying in stock as well but if you take a look at the past week as far as tesla's option activity you had 143 different trades totaling 57.01 million dollars with a positive order value of 70 nine percent that's huge especially given what happened with tesla's stock last week i mean um, um, imagine if tesla had a really good last week you, uh, these numbers would have been even better but almost 80 percent positive order value in the options market from big money alone not retail investors big money in a week where tesla you know fell 12 percent upon earnings that's not something you typically 
expect to see. Now, further further validating this, as, as Tesla is falling, you're actually seeing shorts covering on short positions. Incrementally, of course, we've had about one and a half million shares on net get covered in the past week or so. Short interest of free flow has went from 84 or 3.84% down to 3.76%. So incrementally um, reducing the short interest of free flow. And typically, that's not what you expect to see if if a stock actually falls, right? If people are actually bearish on a company and the stock starts to fall, shorts like to pile into that short position because it's validating the short thesis. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of other reasons for that as well. But normally with high quality companies, Wall Street's actually bullish on when you see the the stock fall is when you see shorts start to cover, right? Um, and that's exactly what you are seeing with Tesla. You are not seeing shorts adding to short positions as Tesla stock falls in price. And that is bullish. If you take a look at Google Trends data for the Tesla lineup, you can see the Cybertruck has recently went from 61 to 73. The Model Y has went from 24 to 29. The Model 3 is staying at 23. The Model S went from 10 to 11. And the Model X went from 8 to 9. Over on StockTwits, Tesla's sentiment yesterday was bearish at 33. Today, it's bullish at 56. So that is an improvement that is good to see. Message volume went from normal of 49 yesterday to low of 40 today. And participation ratio today is normal at 54. Google Trends data for full self-driving is still sitting at 21, which again is higher than anywhere you trended in um, the past before this free trial um, was initiated. So you've you've had that that big spike up to 100. You've been falling recently, but you're really bottoming in the low uh, to mid 20s. And this just shows more interest into full self-driving than we had previously. Tesla continues to run about 4,000 different ads with Google, and Tesla's inventories globally remain pretty much unchanged. The Model Y at 6,200, the Model 3 at about 4,800, the Model X at 3,200, and the Model S at about 2,600. Again, on a technical basis, these trend lines are really the only things that matter. Call it at about $220 per share. You held support there um, into the close of the trading day on Friday. On Friday's close, you did close at $219.80, um, $219.80. In after hours, you popped up almost a half of 1% um, back to $220.65 per share. So there's a lot of support coming in. There's a lot of demand coming in around this 220 level with these longer term trend lines. And again, I mean, take a look at the S&P. The RSI is at 46.43. The NASDAQ, the triple Q's is even worse. The triple Q's RSI is at 38.27. I mean, that's even after a 1% rally that we've seen on Friday. Don't be surprised if we do bounce back up to that 50-day moving average and Tesla can see a little bit of a rally here as well. That would be almost exactly a $10 move higher in the triple Qs. Now, stay tuned to the channel for the next video coming out at 8 p.m. tonight. I will give you a run through of all of your major data and events coming out next week, as well as earnings, because that's really going to be the next driver for our markets. And as long as nothing goes incredibly wrong next week, I think you're probably due for a rally again. It's going to be a volatile period in time. You're going to see big up moves, big down moves like and that's why I think it's going to be very unpredictable to try to uh, really even swing trade this market. I don't think there's going to be much of a swing trade, maybe playing the overextension to the downside or the upside. I think now you're a little overextended to the downside and this touch pretty much touch of the 100 day moving average um, was a pretty good sign that maybe it would be good to go long this market. But again, um, you know, every day we're going to wake up to something different, um, some new event that uh, can, you know, totally change the sentiment in the markets, especially into the election and then the potential growth scare or not. Do we get a recession scare? By by growth scare, I say that really means recession scare. Do, does Wall Street start to, you know, say, hey, are we going to have a recession soon? I mean, there's definitely recessionary data, but Wall Street they don't want to believe that, especially with the GDP numbers that just came out. But if we continue to get durable goods orders, retail sales, consumer spending, defaults coming in the way that they are, it's only a matter of time before that recession scare comes into 
market. So I think this can have a positive impact on Tesla in the near term that could probably send Tesla back to about $240 per share if I were to speculate on the next week or two price action um, for the markets. Again, minus any um, bad news that, uh, that, that could come out any day really so let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and i will see you in the next one